just as a disclaimer i am uh, neither a journalist nor a politician uh, nor anything interesting like that i am a corporate manager thank you all my life more than 26 years i have been in direct customer facing marketing roles i began life in 97 with hindustan lever uh, i was marketing head for various categories in hindustan lever and then i have been a cmo since 2011 various stints uh, at visa the card and payments company followed by star sports i was global head of marketing at royal enfield and now for 3 years i have been at tata motors but this presentation has nothing to do with my formal role i am as a good marketer you need to also be constantly a student of the change that impacts the consumers lives i think earlier the point has been made that if you are in doubt follow the consumer that is usually the north star in any navigation that happens in marketing my presentation today therefore is less to do with what's happening in journalism and in the media narrative but more about recognizing the world that we live in but before i get there this is how mankind evolved for about 250000 years after we became homo sapiens this is where we were living as a species on the plains of africa and human life expectancy was miserably short but within the first 5 to 7 years after you became cognizant uh, everything that happened was finite only the sequencing changed today i saw a giraffe then a rhino then a hippo then a poisonous weed tomorrow poisonous weed first then a hippo then a chimpanzee and so on mankind by evolutionary logic is not wired to encounter change on the plains of africa if a bush was shaking and the curious amongst the lot went and saw what was behind the bush there was at least a 50% chance that he became a protein snack for whatever it was that was lurking behind the bush and so he was not coming back to the gene pool in the evening he he was not around the campfire over 200000 years risk taking and curiosity has been evolutionarily in terms of evolutionary progression culled out of the species but in the last 200 years in the last 100 years in the manufacturing world and in the last say 50 years in the domain of accessible technology change has become bigger than ever in the past so if you are unable to grapple with change or if change has set about but you don't recognize it it is not your fault it is a limitation of our species but you must embrace that change because without change you will not be able to survive this is another truth about how mankind is equipped we are not multifocal entities as a species we are used to being unifocal every time there is a group photograph automatically the most important person is made to stand in the middle of the group and then the next important people and the next important people and so on any time that an organogram is made have you ever seen an organogram that has the junior most bloke at the top it is impossible so both vertically as well as horizontally human beings are focal they need to focus on one thing but in the world of accessible internet in the world of the smartphone in the world of the algorithmic filter and in the world of artificial general intelligence we are living in a multifocal world in science fiction they show you a room with blue lights where there is a collection of computers and people are sitting commanding the earth but that's not the way in which the algorithmic world actually exists it is so diffused that everybody's data is interacting with everybody else's data there is no one room if there was one room trust me we would be able to control the world better but there are many rooms many algorithms from your electric iron to your refrigerator door to the doorbell that rings uh, with a mygate application to your facebook feed to your spotify daylist every bit of data about you is talking to every other bit of data and you must therefore learn to live in a multifocal world now ai has become 
uh, the most perpetual topic I have encountered in the last 18 months. Anywhere and people ask about AI like they used to inquire about popular songs, film stars or politics in the past. But I want to let you know that artificial intelligence is not new. Artificial intelligence has been around practically for our entire lifetime. Uh, Anurag, of course, is very old, maybe halfway through his life it may have occurred, but for the rest of us who are young, it has been around our entire lifetime. Why? Because narrow artificial intelligence, when you type on Microsoft Word and it prompts you for the next word, when you leave your refrigerator door open and it beeps, all of the, when a lift says 10 people have entered and Anurag and I cannot enter because we are not slim enough yet, those are all instances of machine learning and artificial intelligence. What is new is artificial general intelligence in the wide sense, in the conversational ability sense. And that is what is giving us goosebumps. Because human beings have placed, as a species, have placed extraordinary importance on fluency, on ability to speak well. Actually, it is not a characteristic of intelligence, it is just a learned skill. But we think somebody who is having a conversation, fata fat, jawab, sawal, jawab, then that is wonderful, that is illuminating. And this ability, statistical ability, almost out of linear algebra to pick a tokenized statistical option for what completes the word, Artificial general intelligence, and anything I'm saying is very crudely generalized, so please bear with me, is actually a great fill-in-the-blank exercise, right? If you know that a popular name in India is Mohan, and you know a football is that round thing which you cook, kick, then if I say Mohan kicks football, it works. If you say football kicks Mohan, that is incorrect, because commonly you have encountered Mohan to be a name and football to be an object. But there may be in Papua New Guinea or in Finland, the chance that Mohan is actually the football. It is referred to as a football. And uh, football is actually a perfectly proper first name. But statistically that will not throw up when you are conditioned in an Indian language or an Indian English environment. This is what artificial general intelligence is doing. And we do not understand this and we are wowed by this and rightly so. In 1950, Alan Matheson Turing, who was a deep genius, who was responsible for many projects besides the Manhattan Project, he gave what was then acknowledged to be the standard litmus test. If a machine can have a conversation with you and you cannot perceive that you are talking to a machine, then it has acquired general intelligence. That concept of general intelligence has happened almost 20, 30 years ago, but it was not commercialized till November 2022 when chat GPT came about, GPT-2 actually, first of all. And then everybody was like, wow, this thing is fabulous. It will change our life. And, you know, in the marketing profession, in the journalistic profession, as I keep joking, people are first of all obituary experts. Now print is dead. Now TV is dead. Now life will never be the same. There will be no jobs. Everybody rushes to announce the birth of something new. And before that phenomenon is a toddler, everybody else who is walking the earth is dead and gone. Now, you are all familiar with this. Uh, any phone on the planet today, any, the cheapest dumb phone, has more computing power than the entire planet had in July 1969 when man first landed on the moon. And an ordinary washing machine or an electric iron, multi-switch electric iron, will have more computing power than NASA had when Neil Armstrong landed on the moon. And between 2014 and 2024, 3 billion smartphones have lit up on the planet. We've gone from 1 billion to 4 billion smartphones. 3 billion means 300 crore. If 300 crore times the multiple of what the planet had in 1969 or 70 has come about, how can marketing and media and our everyday lives be the same? When I went to engineering college, it was a privilege to break the line for the STD booth or to get a token at Yuko Bank to withdraw money earlier than your turn. Today, no person on the planet 
who is born after the year 2000 will recognize that aluminum box which used to be a STD booth or understand the brass token that we used to get at a bank. Everything has been appified. So the pace of change is so rapid that even if you are conscious that it is changing you, you cannot escape it. So the best way to go about it is to make friends with it and deal with it with perspective and distance. And I will explain how. Now, another common fallacy is that artificial intelligence is a software. And because in the day of Rosemary, we treat them synonymously, we call it software. But it is not a software. It is not. What is a software? A software is a predictable, repeatable code. So the simplest thing that you were taught basic was, you know, 2 plus 2 is equals 4. Every time you run that code, it will give you a predictable answer. But you pick up your phone and go to any of the AI applications that you may have, and you ask who is Bhupendra Chaube, who is Idris Loya, you will not get the same answer three times in a row. Because AI is a neural net and it hallucinates. There is some Subranshu Singh who is a semiconductors professor in University of Indiana. Very often, artificial general intelligence rewards me with a PhD in semiconductor physics, which I have not earned, because it is hallucinating. And that hallucination, you know, is a matter of deep thought, because what it's teaching you is it learns iteratively. NaCl, sodium chloride salt, is like software. Every single molecule of salt is exactly the same. But salt in a recipe, namak swadanusar, that is artificial general intelligence because you can choose to put as much as you like, not put it at all. That optionality and that scraping that it does is far superior to a software. In 2016, AlphaGo, a program, beat the then reigning world champion Lee Sidol at a game called VHC Go. It's a Japanese-Chinese board game. It is the most fluidic, unassignable game in the world. Till now, Kasparov was beaten by Deep Blue in the late 80s. But computer programming has not been able to codify Go because it is completely random. You can begin anywhere on the squares. You can, it's a game of encirclement. But neural network was able to learn that because what it does is dynamic instability. It learns the rules and then it plays itself at a pace that is inconceivable for the human mind. Just to put it in perspective, and I'm quoting a Deloitte research, if an artificial neural network, AI, taught itself chess, it would learn 2,500 years of chess in about six and a half hours at quantum computing speeds, two, two hours if it's faster. And then the magical thing is it will play moves that no human has paid in 2,500 years. Why? Because we are taught by a protocol. This is the opening. If this happens, then this happens. Human mind is learning by pattern and this is learning by incidence. So it will break out of those 2,500 into whatever million permutations and play something which you and I have not conceived. So therefore, it is not software. It is, I mean, now I am crossing the boundaries of technical correctness, but it is alive like you and I are alive. It hallucinates, it learns, it iterates. And therefore, it is way more powerful than finite code. And that is why it is picking up. A year in AI is more than a decade in software. And as you know, a year in software is way more than a year in our everyday non-internet mediated lives. So what will happen now? Dial toneization, I call it. You know, in America till 1945, till after the war, phones were operator operator driven phones you picked up and somebody said hello where can i connect you and you said hello connect me to Mr. dr anurag batra and then they would plug in in the pbx and you would get your call connected after the war there was a short shortage of manpower and at and the the telephone operators went on strike so they realized that as the telephone network expands it is impossible to have manually assisted phone connects so a they made an automatic exchange 
and B they said that then you know how it will go that this phone is working if there is no sound now today on our phone we pick up and see the bars we don't need a dial tone so they invented the dial tone when you pick up and you hear a krrrr that means it is live now you can start dialing so we are very fascinated with AI because it is a toy right now for everybody when it sinks into the background that is when it will be millions of times more powerful when it becomes like a dial tone it is present in your everyday lives but you're not engaging with it out of novelty the second thing is abhi aapko agar meri do baat achhi lagi hongi to kuch ne google mein jaake kaun hai ye bahut bol raha hai so you know they, the origination of knowledge is search and search is the biggest advertising platform blue links search by google last year for the first time in the world's history advertising reached 1 trillion dollars and of that 700 billion dollars ek billion mein 100 crore hote hain 700 billion dollars of advertising was purely digital if you keep aside tiktok a couple of other chinese players twitter which is now x snap which these are relatively smaller players if you keep aside this 100 billion or thereabouts 600 billion dollars was divided between largely the meta ecosystem which is whatsapp intra facebook and the google in google ecosystem which is primarily google search google programmatic advertising google maps and so on and so forth of this 250 billion dollars was google programmatic advertising when you type where can i get coffee in khan market and you get a list of links those links are not indexed to search by merit they are indexed to who is paying for that real estate and 250 billion dollars is a lot of money so i am giving you a lot of gyan here but they are earning 250 billion dollars so clearly they are winning right <laughs> we are all only doing something for academic merit the world has also changed when in 1959 the movie ben hur was released americans went annually to 25 movies they saw 25 movies in a year in 2015 that number was 4 so it went from cinema to television from television to cable from cable to screens ott and now it is engaging you just as much as you are engaging it and therefore please note in the world of artificial intelligence things have gone from being big broadcast and infrequent to becoming small frequent and social this is the major change that has happened now how many of you this morning have checked whatsapp since the morning keep your hands up and how many of you have checked it more than 10 times how many have gone to one or the other social media platform how many of you have seen an hour of television since the morning how many of you have read three articles in two different newspapers since the morning how many of you know or can name five nobel laureates in the last 5 years i will pay a lakh of rupees i have my checkbook with me how many of you know kim kardashian i rest my case so the popularity the buzz worthiness what is significant what is important the magic of advertising through digital means is the framing of your attention it is the framing of your attention you you are not only seeing what they have framed for you you are not seeing what is outside of the frame and then we will move to other things so there is an algorithmic dictation what is that algorithmic dictation you open your gmail your mails are already sorted for you in folders you open your phone photos same time last year you know it will assort your photographs for you spotify will give you a feed of lists uh you know instagram will pop up reels that are important tiktok where it operates in the world is 100% uh programmatically dictated it is artificially injected feed so the ability that you have to choose is a test of will power you have to break away and say no i will do something else left to yourself you are conditioned to do the same thing again and again and again now how are 
experience is being changed to engagement, it is as follows. My father, who is a retired bureaucrat, is not very conversant with the internet, so, but he doesn't know how to go to see Google and all that. So he is telling me a couple of years ago, I did not have the heart to tell him that it is adaptive and therefore because he is looking for the company that I worked in, he is getting more information about it. I thought at least for once let my father be impressed with me. But this is true at a social scale for all of us. Now I cannot predict Anurag's behavior or Tasmai's behavior. But you can behave, you can frame and control the behavior of the collective. If you put a gas under a microscope, the movement of individual molecules is completely random, but the movement of the gas as a whole is completely following physical principles, its relation to pressure and volume, etc., etc., etc. It's somewhat like that for human society. I cannot dictate what Tasmai is going to see, but I can tell her when she engages what she will see. What are the examples of that? Let me get to it. One is screening through algorithms. One, two, three, four, and they can talk to each other. How many of you have Netflix? If you go to Netflix, you know, uh, an ordinary newspaper also has the courtesy to divide humanity into 12 astrological signs. Usme horoscope aati na, roj, aaj aapka din achcha hai, aaj aapko piyaj nahi khana chahiye, wagara. All of that, akum rashi walo ke liye bara baje tak kasa, you know, this kind of a thing. Now, there are 12 sun signs, but Netflix will predict what you want to see with three genres of movies. Tell me what three types you like or four and that's about it. But underlying there are more than 89,000 cohorts and the MIT Media Lab and originally the PARC, Palo Alto Research Center of Xerox, did two different algorithms. One was called programmatic chaos and the other was called singular value decomposition. Simply put, if I send you mail, I want to know what mail Dr. Anurag Batra reads more often. So mails that have exchange for media in it, he tends to open. That is content-based filtering. I will serve him more of that content which he opens. Then I have the definition of a cohort. What are people like Dr. Batra opening? You know, they may be opening things about the economy, how to invest the billions of dollars that I have made, etc., etc. This collective is called collaborative filtering. Combine the two and it becomes a perfect recipe to dish you what you want more and more. So you are conditioned to act as per platform. Now why is that different? Suppose I write an article and I publish it individually on a website. It will never scale up. It will never be found. If I put it on LinkedIn or on Facebook, or if I make a video and put it on Reels, it has to follow the logic of the platform. It will be successful only when it subscribes to the template of the platform. This power, economically called cloud capital, is only with the American ecosystem and then the Chinese ecosystem. Even the Europeans don't have it, we don't have it. And the cloud capital, Every time you go around in an Uber, every time you order from an Amazon, every time you engage with a Facebook, it is accruing to them. And remember this, the phone that is lying, lying right next to you has all of your digital ecosystem on it. And this digital ecosystem knows more about you than your mom does, than your wife does, than your colleagues do, than your boss does, than the rest of the planet put together does. In fact, it knows more about you than you yourself know because you have forgotten that holiday two years ago in Thailand but this one remembers. You cannot tell me what latitude, longitude you are sitting on at this moment but your app knows. You have forgotten what you paid Uber day before yesterday but the Uber app remembers. You have forgotten what are your last 20 credit card transaction but your app remembers. So you are actually in a sense directed to act as per this cloud capital universe. And it, I mean, I'm sounding, I'm very much for it by the way, I'm a mainstream corporate animal, there is inexorable logic of profitability, so there's nothing wrong with it. But we must recognize how this works. Now, in traditional logic, the opposite of a great idea is a bad idea. 
but in the world of artificial intelligence the opposite of a great idea can also be a great idea because you are living in that universe that bubble that filter and you are not encountering noises or voices from the other end so it is bad for culture building because agar man lijiye vincent van go instagram ki era mein ji rahe hote to wo miserable failure hote because unhone apni puri zindagi mein ek painting bechi wo bhi deep sub matlab deep discount pe moby dick पहले एडिशन में लेस देन 300 हंड्रेड कॉपीज बिकी दस साल तक फिर वो रीप्रिंट नहीं हुई मच लेटर हरमन मेलविल बिकेम हु बिकेम सो इन आवर क्लिकिंग अवतार द प्रोग्रामेटिक लॉजिक इज वॉट यू लाइक इज वॉट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट बट वॉट इज ट्रूली वैल्यूएबल मे नॉट बी वेरी लाइकेबल एंड वॉट इज लाइकेबल मे नॉट बी वेरी ट्रूली वैल्यूएबल हाउ मेनी ऑफ एस गॉट वैक्सीनेटेड फॉर कोविड हाउ मेनी ऑफ एस कैन नेम इवन वन आउट ऑफ द फोर और फाइव साइंटिस्ट who actually led the vaccine development nobody but virat kohli's three centuries you will give me very i mean i'm not i'm not ridiculing our passions i'm just saying this is the conditioned environment with which that reality emerges so there are there are lots and lots of works on this i would highly encourage you to read this book in particular shoshana zuboff's tim wu has written several books from master switch to attention economy uh there is a very popular author called Derek Thompson who has written about hit makers what makes a hit in this world uh then there is the world of algorithmic anxiety abhi aap dekhiye main itna acha bol raha hu fir bhi humko bechaini hoti hai har 5 minute mein it is not your problem it is like i am a you know suppose i am a smoker i have a nicotine drop then i have to fix my nicotine drop like that you have a dopamine drop have i missed out something important and this happens in my meetings it happens everywhere this dopamine drop happens why because nothing no one thing that you encounter is so significant so satiating or so impactful ke fir baaki jaise koi achhi kavita suna pad lijiye to fir wapas bar bar aapko kavita aisa nahi hai iska karan hai <coughs> there was a musician a composer called brian eno who in 79 launched an album that album was called music for the airports for the first time a word was coined ambient music ambient music ka matlab wo jo aapki lift mein bajti hai jo aapke spa mein bajta hai us music ko sun ke aap bahut bhav vibhor bhi ho sakte hain us music ko aap totally ignore bhi kar sakte hain us music ke upar aap baat cheet bhi kar sakte hain apna kaam bhi kar sakte hain that music is good but it is not compelling but it is not boring your feed has become like that no and so you you miss it no problem if you stay with it no problem earlier 10 years ago the world was not like that if i was friends with this one this one and this one it was a social network i would get feed sequentially and chronologically then they said sir itne billions of log aage to possible nahi hai in the name of usability they said you know what we will tell you what is important so we will start dropping this feed called for you so it was done for customer experience that how can you know despite dr anurag batra's reach how can he keep track of what 5 billion people are doing so i will tell him and we all then passively started receiving it and that passivity is advertising the first frame attention to get engagement the more you engage the more it consumes you you read a book you buy a newspaper i close the book or the newspaper my engagement is over but on the internet media it doesn't work like that the more you consume it the more it consumes you and then it is a virtuous self fulfilling loop and that creates then the eyeballs which is sold to advertise it's a simple it the business is advertising content is only the means to doing it now let me skip a few slides to come to how is gen ai going to shape it one is this whole business of search what do we call google google is a search engine and now meta has put uh, on whatsapp you must have all encountered it already it is not giving you links it is giving you answers so we are moving from the era of search engines to answer engines and that between these two positions hangs about 300 billion dollars of advertising because right now 
when you asked a question, you were being given links or destinations. It's like going to a potato field, pulling out the aloo, going home, making french fries. Now you're being given a box of Pringles. There is no need to exert. So therefore, on Netflix, again coming back to it, have you tried search? Search is clunky. It doesn't want you to search because it gives you thumbnails. It, it, your landing page is your destiny. You consume. You have told me this kind of picture. Now we will tell you that people like you watched. This is what you did. This is. So they are good or bad not allowing you to explore. Certainly you can search for Al Pacino, but you can't say Al Pacino romantic, Al Pacino happy ending. That kind of algorithmic breakdown is not there. But it exists underneath. The 89,000 cohorts that they have has Amitabh Bachchan, Amitabh Bachchan in a tragic role, Amitabh Bachchan in angry young man without blood, Amitabh Bachchan angry young man with happy ending without blood. This is the level of decomposition that it will have. But it doesn't allow you to search for it. Because each cohort is then profitable. So it dishes you whatever you choose to engage with. Now, so I, I told you this is the difference. Perplexity.ai, you should go and check it out, is an answer engine. It has a conversation with you when you ask. And it then makes a resume kind of a, a breakdown for you. It's very interesting. Uh, of course, like the limitations of AI, it can mix up, etc., etc. But perplexity is less than 35 people working out of a shared office facility. It's not yet done its C round of funding and it's already valued uh, as a unicorn. I'm going to skip through all of this. Now, the other part is the role of brand and what is real and what is unreal. You know, if you think that you have a house and you have a Mona Lisa ka print, hai. exactly the same, right? But Obviously, I don't own the Mona Lisa. It is a look-alike. When you encounter it in the digital domain, what is the distinction between the real? You know, real to Paris me Louvre me hai, badi bhiir jati hai wahan par blue si wall ke upar tangi bhi. That is the real. Ye to inhone print kari tha. That is because you are conscious of the physical world reality. When you are not conscious of the physical world reality, how will you guess? Now, the first and the last are machine generated and the middle two are human generated but our mind would have told us otherwise now i can take a scan for dr batra record his voice and then dr batra will live to immortality he will give all his speeches but it will not be him it will be the ai avatar of him this is not science fiction hollywood was on strike for three months to prevent this possibility I mean, of course, he's losing weight, so, you know, th there will be a new him. But anybody can be recreated like that. Now, in that world, it is important for Subranshu or Dr. Batra or Tasmai to say, this is mine. So, provenance, uh, watermarking and authentication becomes important. Otherwise, it's exactly the same thing. Uh, we are all living in a world of social media. I have visited on social media pe visit kiya hai, dark, dark social as well. But this is the reality. The world is growing at a 28, close to 30%. You know, that means three years it's doubling. We have almost two and a half hours of consumption. And it is a very, very rich industry indeed. Now, let's get to something more interesting before I close. You see, one of the criticisms... Uh, of this criticism, criticism of the criticism is, if you talk about Fizul, if you give a feed, then it will be a list. List is not a judgment. We are only curating. Curation is the word that is used. But, that is somewhat dodgy logic. Why? Because any list is a value judgment. What goes on top, what goes on bottom, even if it is done innocently, will make it appear like it is a value judgment. It is a ranking. And human beings are experts at ranking. Now, because of this, there will be in the future a new arrival, which will be authentication itself, which can be best done by blockchain. Because blockchain has become, in a sense, reputed to be a speculative, monetizable commodity. Blockchain is actually ledger. Haan, main, if you read Shruti and Smriti, 
उन्होंने बोला ऋषि फलाना फलाना उन्होंने सुना सो देर वॉज ऑथेंटिकेशन यस आई वाउच दैट भूपेंद्र जी नोज अनुराग टोल्ड मी एंड वी थ्री वर देयर दैट ऑथेंटिकेट्स इट द लेजर कैन ऑथेंटिकेट बट द बिलियंस एंड यू नो हाउ मेनी इमेजेस आर प्रोड्यूस्ड इन अ मंथ टुडे एट्टी बिलियन डॉलर एट्टी बिलियन इमेजेस and when kodak went bankrupt the world had 1 billion images and it used to rule the world or let's take another example magazines people say no no but you see the the reason why everything is going digital is because it's so much more immersive what was more immersive more elite more advertiser friendly more class conscious than magazines the world of magazines and it went away like that you know i used to have a india today photograph of rakesh sharma going to space you know a raghurai photograph on my steel cupboard for a long time my son doesn't know what a magazine is he is 16 so it is not that something is entrenched it will not go away it will mold away very very fast now ethical issues are a challenge but i am personally less concerned about ethical issues in the sense that the validation will itself become uh, important so jaise hum handicrafts khareedte hain hum kehte hain re isme you know it is not perfect like machine made but that's the value of it tomorrow and very soon a day will come when it is say it is machine generated but tasmai has accredited it she has validated it so the human responsibility that gatekeeping responsibility that an editor had a fashion buyer had a fashion journalist had that will come back because otherwise normal means dumb normal means regressive normal means more of the same and i have taken more than enough time so let me jump to one lot more is happening we know of only these two or three that i mentioned but 50 billion dollars of investment has gone into ai startups in america alone and in data structures between meta and google and microsoft never forget microsoft between these three 2 trillion dollars of investment has been committed by exit 2026 which means if that much money is moving in there will be an ecosystem which will do things differently and so what we see as everyday parts of digital life will come and go will change now mastercard is a great example from a brand point of view they have mapped your transaction they are able to give you right time right place and the model was manual earlier if you remember outside a shop you would have a visa and a mastercard sticker so you know it was being accepted now that transaction is on the phone but the environment is pinging you supporting you and being able to give you a much more hand handheld experience than earlier spotify is well known uh which is the number one factory for pop music in the world do you know any of your country which is the country which originates almost all the major hits that flow out of america it is sweden sweden has programmatically perfected the art of what works and what doesn't work and they have realized that if you are 60 to 80% probability of a hit then it's only a matter of platform and scale इसलिए आप कितने भी जीनियस आर्टिस्ट हैं कितने भी जीनियस जर्नलिस्ट हैं अगर आप प्लेटफॉर्म फ्रेंडली नहीं हैं तो आप स्केल अप नहीं हो सकते यू विल बी अ नीश प्लेयर ऑल थ्रू आई एम गोइंग टू स्किप ऑल ऑफ दिस आई हैव स्पोकन अबाउट इट अर्लियर नाउ लेट मी रेस्ट हियर दिस आई मीन आई एम सॉरी द दिस इज अ वेरी ट्रेडिशनल स्लाइड फ्रॉम गार्टनर इट्स हैज हाइप हैपन्स एंड देन फ्रॉम दैट पीक ऑफ द हाइप देयर इज अ ट्रफ ऑफ डिसल्यूजनमेंट it falls down and then people say okay been there done that and then from that decline happens consolidation from that consolidation happens more meaningful investment and then from that decline we come to a plateau of productivity and this is happening in our world the present excitement around graphical processing units nvidia open ai all of this will has already started seeing a marginal to sharp decline in american valuations it will probably go further I, i can't predict but the next lot will be smarter why because every ai that you are using 
is the smartest AI that has ever existed. Please note that. Every television program you are seeing is not the best television program that has existed. Every print magazine or newspaper that you pick up is not necessarily the best print magazine or newspaper that ever existed. But every AI interface, by definition, if you check it half an hour later, it will be vastly improved than what you had experienced half an hour earlier. This is the promising part about how it will grow. And last advice is to young people, you know, are, be, stick to conservatism, don't, you know, don't fly beyond your cage. Uh, you know, stay within the guardrails. Because, again, go back to the evolutionary logic, to fail means to die. But actually, in our world, to fail doesn't mean to die. It's just, it's like a boxing match, if, you know, once. I used to be in school, it was compulsory sports and I was for the blue house, prompted to enter a box. I mean, I was the last guy who was left with nothing else, so they gave me boxing. And the other guy made pulp out of me because he was an expert boxer. <laughs> and I was trying to hide for two rounds and then I nearly collapsed. But, you know, I lived. So our engagement with technology in our professions as journalists, as marketeers, as students, as whatever, is a bit like stepping into the ring. Thodi mar pitai hogi, but you will emerge smarter the next time around. And hopefully, if you're do that, doing that, then you will be like this. I mean, Muhammad Ali, the one who's standing, not the one who's on the ground. So I wish you all the knockout success in your careers. And engage with uh, AI. Don't be wary of it. If you spend five hours with AI in a week, you will have a very different experience than if you engage with it for half an hour. And, you know, generally people ask out of vanity, who is Subhranshu Singh, I will ask. And then I will say, ah, ye to say ye to. <laughs> that's not what you should be asking it. You should ask it to imagine uh, a toddler in the slow and write a rhyme about it. Then you will see the, the true power of it. It gives you things which are in your blind spot. And if you do that, I think it is a better world, although we have to make good sense of it. So with that, I'll close. Thank you very much.